Good day, everyone. I'm Mark Martinez, CEO of Mirix. And I'm Jörg Thomas Dirks, CEO of Norax Farm, and we are delighted to welcome you to the special video as we join the global community in observing World Rare Disease Day. Today is a day to shine a spotlight on the challenges faced by individuals and families affected by rare diseases. At Norax Farm and Minorix, our commitment to making a meaningful impact on the lives of those touched by rare conditions is at the heart of our mission. One rare disease that has deeply captured our attention is cerebral adrenoleukodystrophy or CLD. This devastating, fast-moving, and fatal genetic disorder affects the nervous system and leads to a range of challenges for both patients and their family. In our ongoing pursuit of groundbreaking therapies, collaboration is key. Today, we are honored to have with us a true expert in the field, Professor Fanny Moshan, who has been instrumental in advancing our understanding of CALD and its complexities. Professor Moshan, thank you for joining us today. Your expertise has been extremely valuable, and we are eager to hear your insights on the current landscape of CLD and the importance of raising awareness. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be uh, here with you today. I'm going to briefly introduce myself. So I'm Professor Fanny Mochel. I work at Sorbonne University in Paris, and I'm the coordinator of a reference center uh, for rare disease and in particular leukodystrophy. And we see mostly adults in uh, our uh, clinics at La Salpetria. So I'm here today to tell you uh, about our experience in uh, X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy, ALD. As you know, the disease presents in many forms, so it's complex because uh, it, the disease affects both children and adults. And when we talk about adults, we also have both men and women. And we are actually trying to address these complexities in our center by having a um, patient uh, therapeutic program that we run and uh, trying to target this different population. So briefly, uh, when we talk about complexity, because it's not only a neurological disease, it's also an endocrine disease. And for us, we like to summarize it by three main uh, symptomatology. So we have the adrenal insufficiency uh, and uh, affecting both uh, children and adults, and here we are only talking most of the time about boys and men. We have the adrenomyeloneuropathy, uh, which is, uh, as the name says, affecting mostly uh, um, um, the spine and the peripheral nerve, so leading to uh, gait and uh, problems and spasticity and uh, urinary problems. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, a disabling condition that requires some help in walking, but also uh, other assistance, especially for the urinary dysfunction. And these affect only adults, but we can have expression in both men and women. And then we have the last form of the disease, which we call the cerebral uh, adrenalocodystrophy or CLD. And this uh, form of the disease affects mostly uh, uh, the uh, boys and men. And why do we have adrenal insufficiency and cerebral ALD mostly affecting uh, boys and men? Well, because of the excellent inheritance of this disease. Uh, so basically, men who are affected uh, carry a mutated gene on the uh, X chromosome. And since they don't have a second X chromosome, they cannot compensate for this abnormal gene uh, expression. Uh, whereas women have this double X uh, that allow them to have some kind of compensation. So in uh, in summary, we would say that uh, women present only in adulthood uh, with this possible myeloneuropathy uh, form of the disease, not all of the women, but we know that this has been really uh, underexplored uh, and many countries today are conducting studies to better address this, uh, this unmet medical need. And then when it comes to the boys and men, well, we have this uh, three potential presentation uh, with the uh, adrenal insufficiency, the myeloneuropathy, and the cerebral uh, form of the disease, the, the CLD. So of course, it's very important to detect the disease because adrenal insufficiency is treatable and it can be a life-threatening condition. But what we feel is um, less explored, and especially when it comes to adults, 
uh, neurology. And in general, uh, adult medicine is the cerebral ALD. Uh, so basically this active inflammatory uh, demyelination of the brain, uh, where sometimes we can identify trigger, but in most cases we cannot. And this uh, inflammation uh, and, and demyelination is going to lead to progressive uh, loss of various functions from cognition to motor. And also sometimes with an insidious presentation with psychiatric symptoms. Uh, and it can be some hyperactivity in children, can be some depression in adults. Uh, so there are early signs that are, of course, often missed. This uh, usually say that the mean survival uh, when cerebral ALD starts is three to five years. So it's devastating disease, first for the patient, but also for all the family that is involved because of, of course, the progressive uh, uh, dysfunction of various uh, uh, brain functions. And again, of course, also affecting cognition. And uh, usually we know that uh, these so symptoms, very severe symptoms, uh, are preceded by changes on brain MRI. And that's why we all agree, and there have been some uh, international guidelines uh, published uh, in 2022, uh, recapitulating what we uh, all at the moment uh, believe is the best course of action. Now, we recommend to do some very regular uh, MRI, so imaging of the brain, follow-up, in order to capture those early signs of inflammation and demyelination, both in children and in adults, uh, so that we can uh, start treatment uh, as soon as possible. So for now, we mostly know, of course, of uh, bone marrow transplantation, which is going to act uh, on the immune system of the brain by correcting the peripheral immune system. This is, a, or in a nutshell, the, the principle of the treatment. It is, again, mostly effective uh, at the very beginning or even before the beginning of symptoms, so only when there are MRI changes. And, uh, and of course, uh, we know that this is a, a very heavy procedures and that not all patients, of course, are eligible because in particularly of the need of uh, immune compatible uh, uh, match donors. And so that's why there is also this uh, uh, incredible need for alternative treatments to, to the transplant. And, uh, and we know that there are ongoing trials uh, in the disease to try actually to uh, offer alternative to, to the transplant. The uh, need for this uh, brain monitoring is, uh, is probably uh, well uh, recognized in children and particularly every six months from 2 to 12 years of age. And after, after 12 years of age, we usually space the monitoring to a yearly MRI. But again, and this is really our experience, as I mentioned, that we run a, a reference center for adult leukodystrophy that uh, this is uh, uh, usually not uh, well conducted in most uh, adult men with uh, these ABCD1 uh, uh, gene variants, uh, mutations, uh, and that this leads in our center to about every month a patient that comes to our attention with already an advanced disease uh, for which uh, it's too late to propose any intervention. So we are really stressing out, we are stressing that there is no um, time to stop looking for these cerebral ALD forms. And uh, this is uh, an important message for the adult neurology field uh, mm -hmm. because we have late onset uh, of the cerebral ALD uh, as well as early onset in adulthood. So we cannot predict when this can occur. But we believe that about a third of boys uh, will uh, develop uh, cerebral ALD as children, adolescent. And probably, uh, the, the, even if there is no strong data yet available in the adults, but the latest study that was conducted in the Netherlands estimated that maybe more than half of adult patients will also develop a cerebral ALD. So again, uh, we know that it's not um, um, a minor thing to actually perform those MRIs on a yearly basis. It's a lot of pressure for the patient's now waiting for those results, and there is probably a need also for some research to to better uh, uh, help patients who have to undergo these stressful procedures, but it's not invasive, 
even if it's psychologically difficult. But it's the only way we have at the moment to actually detect uh, this special form of the disease uh, so that we can, first of all, of course, understand what uh, may happen clinically or wh what is happening clinically and, and, and again, uh, possibly offer treatment. So um, the, uh, that would be, I guess, my uh, last uh, uh, recommendation that we try to advocate uh, this monitoring and of course, when we know uh, of a patient within a family uh, that is identified, whether it's a man or women, that we uh, try to do our best so that the genetic counseling is done in all the family uh, members that may be uh, also uh, affected, because uh, we know that it is as important for those uh, relatives to get the right testing at the right time and to start the right monitoring possibly the right treatment, especially, of course, with adrenal insufficiency in boys and men, because that's easily treatable, but more largely, of course, for the monitoring of the cerebral ALD, uh, very devastating uh, uh, neurodegenerative disease, but for which uh, there are already existing treatment and hopefully uh, in the coming years, new available treatments. Thank you very much. Professor Morshell, thank you so much. Equally important is the perspective of those directly affected by CLE. With us, we have Karen Harrison, a dedicated member of ALEX, the leukodystrophy charity, who will shed some light on the challenges faced by patients and their families. Karen, we are truly grateful for your presence and your tireless efforts in advocating for the CLD community. Can you please share with us the impact of CLD on individuals and the importance of raising awareness. I'm Karen Harrison, and I'm the Support Services Manager for Alex the Lucas Distribute Charity. I'm also the mum of two boys who were diagnosed with cerebral adrenal dystrophy. At the charity, we look after and help the patients who are diagnosed with this horrific disorder. When a family receives a diagnosis of cerebral ALD, it really is truly devastating for the whole family and their life suddenly changes. Often these boys and men were previously healthy. They had no um, apparent health conditions. And so the initial symptoms are often dismissed or they, the families receive a, a common, more common diagnosis. And it's only when the symptoms progress that actually they end up seeing a, a neurologist who gives them the diagnosis. Cerebral ALD robs these boys and men of all of their ability. So they will lose their eyesight and hearing. They won't be able to speak, to eat, to walk. They, they then require 24 seven care. And so families become their carers. So mums and dads, wives, friends, they become, they have to learn how to care for this person. And that is a huge burden. Because you go from just being a normal, kind of a normal family, going about your everyday life, and suddenly you have to learn how to feed someone. You have to learn how to deal with seizures. You have to learn how to catheterize. It really is just huge. You can't imagine the burden that this place is. Again, often a mum or a dad will have to give up work to help to care for their child, or in the case of an adult, they have to give up work. And so the financial burden as well is absolutely huge. Because of the absence of newborn screening in the UK and Europe, these boys and men are diagnosed too late for treatment. If you cannot diagnose a, a, a male with cerebral ALD at an early stage of the disease, they can have a bone marrow transplant which we know is successful, but only in the very early stages of the disease. So for families, knowing that there was a, a treatment there, had they known that this disease existed, that's really hard because being told that there's absolutely nothing can be done for your loved one, your family member, and that you basically have to take them home and love them and care for them. These boys and men will, will die from this condition but not before they've suffered the most horrific symptoms. 
So the families require a huge amount of support. So that's where we come in as a charity. We can advocate for these families. We help them to understand the disease. The other thing about being diagnosed with adrenal leukodystrophy catastrophe is that you will never heard of the disease. You don't know how to say it, let alone spell it. And a lot of the medical professionals and the allied health professionals also won't have heard of it. So then you spend your entire time explaining to people what the disease is. Often families lose friends because they just don't know how to cope with seeing the deterioration of these the boys and the men. They just can't deal with it. They don't know what to say. So your support system becomes much, much smaller. Also, being having to learn how to do physio, how to learn to deal with muscle spasms. This disease really does rob families of everything. Not only of the affected person, their loved one, their son, their husband, their grandchild. It robs the whole family of what they expected life was going to be like. So we at the charity have been striving to get newborn screening passed in the UK. And unfortunately, we haven't managed as yet. And so that it would be the way to diagnose these boys. But in the meantime, it would be absolutely amazing if we could have some kind of treatment, which wasn't as invasive as a bone marrow transplant, but that could help to stop these symptoms. It would be even more wonderful if it could reverse the symptoms. But any respite and any anything that could be done to just help these boys and men to not have to suffer the way that they do would just be absolutely amazing and so welcome to the community. Thank you very much, Karen, for this powerful testimony. Our companies understand the urgency of finding an effective treatment for a devastating rare disease like CLD. And we are deeply committed toward bringing a new therapeutic option for the pediatric and adult patients affected by this challenging condition. In closing, we want to express our deepest gratitude to Professor Fanny Moschel and Karen Harrison for joining us today. Together, let's raise awareness, foster understanding, and work towards a future where no one is left behind in the face of rare diseases. Please, share this video, spread the word, and join us in making a difference. Together, we can transform the landscape of rare disease care. Thank you for being a part of this important journey with us.